Hello everybody, welcome back, it's Heisenberg. Today we are doing a gear review on the Nemo Riff 15 sleeping bag. All right, first things first, let's get it out of the stuff sack. If y'all see, it stuffs down pretty well. I actually made a mistake and got the 15 long um, because I thought, you know, I'm 5'10". I thought maybe I'm pushing the limits on the uh, the, the regular size, but I should have got the regular. If you're six foot or above, you know, the long is probably for you. But but at 5'10", I, this is too much, too much bag for me. Now let's take a look over this. And this, this is the primary reason right here that I am returning the bag, but we'll get to that. I do like... You have the foot box here, which is water resistant, and it's a little bit thicker than the liner. Zipper up the side. You have a second zipper. You have the primary zipper, which is up here, and it's on the inside and the outside, so you can zip it up wherever you are. You see, you got the inside zipper and the outside zipper, and I use the inside zipper a lot. But if you want to vent, you have a second zipper and you can pull that up and vent. And speaking of vents, you have what's called the thermo gills, which are right here. And you can unzip these and it increases the surface area for heat to come out if you want to cool down the bag. Generally, I never use the thermo gills because if I wanted to vent, I just, you know, undid the side zipper and put a leg out. So didn't really use those. Then from the thermo gills, we come up to the hood. It has a nice hood and it has a little, this little um, flap that kind of goes over you, which I, I like, because once you get your head in the hood, you put this flap over you and all, you know, you just have your nose and your eyes peeking out, which is really nice. And also within the hood, uh, if you can see it, there's a, yeah, there it is. You can put clothes or your pillow or something in there to have a pillow for you and it's got a little pouch for it which is really nice and then it has i had the drawstrings for tightening up the hood i used those because it got cold last night it was cold now that we've seen the bag let's go over some pros and cons of the nemo rift 15. let's get to the pros first pros first you know i like the bag and here are the reasons okay warmth its comfort rating is at 30 degrees and the survival rating is at 15. Um, so comfort, anything down to 30, it's supposed to be comfortable to there. And then from 30 to 15, you know, you can live, but it may not be that great. Below 15, you'll probably freeze to death. Not a good idea. And I found these ratings pretty accurate. Uh, I've had it down 230 and also below 30 into the 20s. And I found down 230, it was very comfortable. Once it hit freezing at 32 and below, it started to get a little cold. So, you know, I found the comfort rating down to 30, you know, pretty accurate. And I've been down to the 20s, the low 20s recently. I have not been down the teens to 15, so I can't speak to the 15 degree survival limit. But I know in the 20s, I was a little chilly, but I, you know, I could still sleep. It wasn't that bad. Um, I'd say once you get below freezing into the 20s and the teens, you need to put on extra clothes to be comfortable in the sleeping bag. The second part is packability. It does pack down very small. The down is, I believe, 800 fill power. Let me write that in. 800 FP. And so it does pack down very well for, for such a large bag. It packs down well. As you can see, it packs down pretty small. There's a Nalgene, and you could pack it smaller, but that's not bad. 
Uh, another pro is the spoon shape. It is not a classic mummy bag. It actually has a spoon shape to it. And you can kind of see that, you know, it's got a wide, a wide foot box. Then it kind of, you know, cuts into the middle and then spreads again at the top. The spoon shape allows uh, for you to, well, they say it's for side sleepers. If you spin, you know, over on your side or on your stomach at night, you can do it easily in the spoon shape versus a mummy bag. And the last pro is the foot box, which I found very nice because the foot box here, if it touched the tent wall, you know, and it was raining, water would come through, but it would never get into the bag because the waterproofness and the thickness of this fabric they have on the foot box is very nice. Now let's go over to the cons. Now the cons, the weight. This thing is a heavy bag. You know, it, it says two pounds, eight ounces for, for the long, but I found that when I weighed uh, the, the sleeping bag in its stuff sack, the stuff sack that it came with, it weighed about three pounds total. So, you know, the sleeping bag may be less than three pounds, but in a stuff sack, it's at three pounds. The durability, this is the main reason. I'm gonna put a star by this bad boy. You know, durability. This, this is why it's going back. If you can see here, I have duct tape. I have a split down the seam about four inches long and down was just hemorrhaging out of it. So, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm not gonna keep a bag that's hemorrhaging down because that's what keeps you warm. And also since I've had the bag, since the very beginning, uh, down has been coming out of it, regardless of the, I mean, even before I had a tear down the seam, down, I would wake up and there would be down in my tent. And I couldn't find the, find the source until I finally found a rip. And that's when it was just, it was over with. And then finally, the price. MSRP on one of these is about $400. I bought mine on sale through REI and it was about $230. But if you are paying full retail at $400, this is a very expensive bag. You know, given that its durability is not that great. Um, very expensive. It's, it's heavy, has poor durability. And at MSRP is very expensive. If you get it, if you get it on sale and you don't mind, you know, patching up holes as they arise, which they will arise. Um, if you can get it on sale, it's not a bad deal. But if you pay an M MSRP for one of these, I would not buy that. In conclusion, I do not recommend this bag unless you get it on a steep, steep discount. And even then you have to understand it's not the most lightweight bag and it is not the most durable bag, but if you can get it at a discount, then hey, you know, get it. But if you're looking for something that's going to last you and it's something that's going to be lightweight, I'd, I'd look for something else. That's my opinion. Yeah.